Hello everyone, welcome to yet another video with me, Amber Rays, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new units kits, but um, we're also going to take just a minute to talk about this. Uh, as you can see, there is, ha well, the game just went back up, and interestingly enough, uh, we are seeing a bit of information being posted about when these character banners, uh, the collaboration re-banners, will be going on. So as you can see, here is some information. That, as you can see, the schedules are basically kind of posted in here. Uh, looks like they will be taking place over a fair amount of time. Uh, so... Yeah, there's a lot, lot, lot of details about this. Um, I would definitely uh, check out uh, the Reddit for final information, but um, uh, well, actually it might just be happening over a few days. It's uh, kind of confusing to read, but if it's only three days to get all of this stuff, I hope you save some lapis. But uh, yeah, with that being said, let's talk about the new character, shall we? So, yes, there are three new five stars that are going to be coming to the game on basically January 1st. The news has not been posted in-game yet. Uh, this update is particularly early for the, for the JP side, um, mainly because New Year's is a big holiday in Japan, and a holiday that um, a lot of Japanese take pretty darn seriously, so... Yeah, we're not going to be seeing any other updates, so all the data has basically just been put in the game now, and we'll find and we'll get to just do it all later. Cool. So, who to talk about first? Well, I'm going to talk about Locke first. Why? Because he's an easy place to start for me, and yeah. So I talked about his TMR and Super TMR last time. TMR is basically attack, 60% attack up with a dagger and charm resistance. I really think that this is like just a absolutely great uh, TMR for because so many characters can equip daggers. So yeah, I think this is really great, and the charm resistance on it too is super nice. Oh my god, uh, that charm resistance is just beautiful, and his super trust mastery is just goes along with it. Again, great for a lot of characters. 165 attack with physical and magical dodge on it. Yeah, I think it's really, really good. But uh, what kind of character is Locke? Well, Locke is, of course, still a thief. You, you know, Tiger can't change its stripes. Uh, he is basically a dual wield chainer slash breaker. Uh, natural dual wield in his kit, limit burst rate up, lower chance to be targeted, uh, higher steal rates. Uh, he has. Uh, HP regen every turn. He has chances to counter uh, physical attacks, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, Paralyze, blind, poison, petrify resistance. He has the true dual wield bonus up as well as the chain modifier, uh, the extra one, so he can definitely dish out probably more damage to, than uh, some of the other characters, or out of the other breakers out there, I should say better passives, uh, can double cast a lot of his abilities, he gets 150% extra Esper stats, which is very interesting if Espers actually start, you know, becoming better. Uh, extra modifiers for his kit. Um, but uh, yeah, let's talk about his abilities. He has his limit burst maxed out 7 star is a 6 hit 2450% physical attack that debuffs water resistance 100% for 3 turns and single target 74% debuffs uh, the enemy for all stats for 3 turns. So pretty high debuffer. What's interesting though is when his HP actually drops below 21%. He gets a two-turn buff to his limit burst that debuffs water resistance for 120%, ups the damage to 3,900%, and breaks the enemy for 84% for all stats. So, that's, that's really interesting. Uh, in terms of breakers out there, Locke is going to be a pretty darn good one. Uh, does that mean that he's insanely broken? If you no, I I don't think so, and there's a couple reasons for that. But um, an 84% debuff is 
really nice given how strong enemies are getting give getting obviously you need to take some damage to do this but uh, there might be ways of activating it and since there's a lot of damage in trials anyway it, it, it is possible looking at his passives as well Locke has a pretty damn decent nice uh, attack stat for being what is essentially a breaker. He has also uh, some really interesting breaks in his kit. Uh, he has a break for each of the stats that is 60% for three turns, but also do different things. His defense break gives him a 4000 HP heal. His spirit break uh, gives a 20% magic damage mitigation for three turns. Uh, his magic debuff gives him 60 MP and his attack debuff gives him some limit burst. Pretty cool. His limit burst is also only 30 limit burst crystals, so it's not exactly the hardest to get. But then we get into the weird thing about his kit. He has a lot of AoE chaining abilities, particularly he has 10 hit chaining abilities that, while a weak modifier on them, debuff 50% for attack and magic or defense and spirit. And here's the problem though, they are 10 hits, meaning that, and I should qualify this too, all of his kit is not Stardust Ray, basically Red 13's 10 hit, 10 frame chaining ability. They are, there is some weird startup on some of his ability I've heard, but some of, most of his chaining will be Stardust Ray, and Stardust Ray chainers are not super prevalent right now on the JP side, but could become. So put a huge asterisk on this. For anybody who's wondering about it, is he is it necessarily is he like the top DPS? No, not even close. Um, plus, the only element he can put on his attacks is the water element. Giving 120% debuff for the water element is nice, but uh, synergy-wise with other chainers, especially a you know Stardust Ray chainers. I'm not super convinced about this yet, but it could turn out into the near future that Titus comes along with Stardust Ray chaining and Water Element, and then you have a really amazing team together. So I wouldn't knock it quite yet. Also, regularly in his kit, uh, a lot of some of his attacks are backloaded damage, and he does have a 10 hit ability that is backloaded that also does 120% water debuff on an enemy for three turns. So he can access 120% water debuff pretty nicely. Uh, I think if you have any interest in CG Titus, you're probably going to want to get Locke, uh, thinking long term. Uh, cooldown abilities that he has in a 7 star, he has a debuff of 70% for 3 turns to enemies and gives himself a 200% buff for attack for 4 turns and adds water element on his attack. That's available turn 1 on a 7 turn cooldown, so it's kind of slow, but gives him a, probably can get his limit burst before these debuffs go away, and he gives himself a pretty nice attack buff too. That's important. He has a weird give himself up 81% to recovery effect, uh, but he also gives uh, auto revive to everyone except himself, and it gives, but he gives himself 30 limit burst crystals. So, uh, regardless of what, like, kind of regardless of what you think about this, giving himself a limit burst at any time, and this is on a six turn cooldown, by the way. Uh, you could easily, you know, go into his first ability, then use this ability before it break or the buffs or the debuffs wear off on the enemy, and then have access to his limit burst the following turn to take advantage of the water damage and the water debuff and everything here. I think that there is some synergy in his kit, and I like that. His last ability is just a 10 hit ability that gives him a 200% limit burst fill rate and access to another ability for three turns. This is on a three turn cooldown, so it should be re fairly regular. Uh, Basically, some high back damage or backloaded damage that also gives some modifiers to other stuff. Long story short, uh, about Locke. If you are interested in CG Titus, if you are interested in making a water element team work, Locke is great. Uh, I think that he should not necessarily be underestimated. His chaining doesn't fit with a lot of teams right now. But he has some strong debuffs and some. he has true dual wield chaining buffs, so I'm pretty sure that he will be the strongest, you know, just 
debuffer, because that's essentially what his kit is, debuffing. So next up, let's talk about Magical Warrior Tina, because in the other video, I did not show the animation. So we kind of got to show that off to redeem myself a whole heck of a lot. And that video is even up already while uh, we're talking about this. Isn't that embarrassing? But uh, let's show off the Limit Burst. This is courte courtesy of Nazta's YouTube. Of course, give him a follow, a like, a subscribe, and maybe a couple of dollars too, if you feel so generous. So, basically kind of keeps into the same uh, pattern of the other CGs. About 14 seconds this one, which is slightly shorter than Lightning and CG Barts, I believe. But not by much. So, yeah, about a 15 second limit burst. And cool, there's all the other stuff I've been watching. Thanks, YouTube. Thanks, Obama. Anyway, so let's talk about Terra next. Uh... Magical Warrior Terra, Magitech Terra, whatever the hell she ends up being called. T Trust Mastery is an 87 attack, 135 magic, plus 20% extra magic sword. Uh, Super Trust Mastery is a 80% magic when equipped with a sword, 10% MP reduction. So, pretty good for Terra, that Super TMR. Not necessarily convinced it's good for any other mage at this point. Uh, looking at her passives, uh, she has a really high base magic, higher than uh, Ellie, so that should tell you something right off the bat. And with passives, she gets a pretty high magic stat too. Nothing to overtly complain about. She can equip guns, rods, of course, so yeah, I think she's plenty fine with all of that. Now, uh, looking into her passives really quickly, she has natural dual wield, which is important because not only it doesn't just limit her to her own TMR, her sword, um, but yeah. Uh, she gets extra modifiers for her spells, sleep confused resistance, uh, natural fire ice lightning resistance, which is nice for mages these days, 30% chance to dodge physical attacks regularly, passives for all kinds of stats, up limit burst fill rate. 10% MP recovery per turn and a permanent 100% magic boost at the start of battle and every time. Uh, Empire Magical Warrior gives extra magic for equipping a sword and a rod. And whether it is dual wielding or true dual handing, this girl's got you covered. She has permanent W cast. She has permanent, uh, or wait, she may not have permanent triple cast. I shouldn't. This isn't listed on here, so she either get, has permanent triple cast or she gets it from her TMR. Either is fine, so let's just keep going anyway. <laughs> Excuse me. Itchy nose. Alright. Uh, she also gets extra modifiers for basically all of her attacks, and she can access her quadra casting at the start of battle, and that's something else we need to talk about, and we'll get there. Uh, she has Liberation of Power, which gives her her Limit Burst at the start of fight, because of course she is a CG character. Extra True Dual Wield, Extra Modifiers, Extra True Dual Wield. Naturally, for spells in her kit, she has the three elemental spells in the Jaw form. She has Break, she has Kiraga, Dispelga, Full Life, Meltdown, and Ultima. So lots of different spells to choose from. Her Limit Burst is an AoE debuff for zero turn. Uh, which is, I think, just parsing issue. A self 250% magic boost for three turns. AoE 1975% magic attack, ignoring 50% spirit, enabling quadra casting for two turns. Now, remember, she can access her limit burst at the start of the fight, but if her, just like Locke, if her HP goes below 21%, she gets an upgrade to her Limit Burst for three turns that ups it. First of all, she gives herself a 300% magic boost, and her Limit Burst damage goes up to 2,950%, ignoring 50% Spirit and Quadra Casting for three turns. 
Her limit burst is bananas and nuts. It is absolutely stupidly insanely way too powerful for a mage. 300% magic boost for any number of turns just for losing HP. I kind of want to hurt her to make her a little bit stronger. Don't make that weirder than it is. It's just a comment about strategy in the game and team building. Now she has dual cast in her uh, for her uh, actual active abilities. She has uh, ways to just remove defense debuffs and give herself a magic boost. Basically, and this is the interesting thing, she has Flame Riot, Arrow Riot, and Saint Riot. Fire, Wind, and Holy Attacks that debuff for the first turn for 75%, for the second turn 100%, and for the next turn 120%. Or wait, no, I got I got it backwards. Sorry, uh, f flip that around. For some reason, it's listed the other way. But um, uh, or wait, hold on, let me read this. So it's an AOE 75% resist for the for three turns. On the next turn, 100% resist for two turns, and then on the following turn, a 120% for one turn. So it's like a six-turn process. Sorry, should have. Uh, got that a little bit clearer first, but it's okay. We got it covered. This is interesting. It is a six turn elemental debuff that is actually getting worse for the enemies. Damn, when she hurts, she really wants. She has a self healing ability that gives 4000 HP, 100 MP, and removes magic debuffs while filling her limit burst at seven crystals, which is a fair amount. Uh, she can give AoE fire, ice, and lightning resistance of 60% for three turns and fill the summon gauge too at the same time. Pretty nice of her. And then we get into her chaining abilities, which are, of course, Chaos Wave. And she has multiple ones. She has a non elemental, a fire, a wind and a light. What this means is all of the Chaos Wave chainers on the JP side have a really strong chaining partner with uh, New Terra, with CG Terra. And that is absolutely insane. Also, it should be noted that um, they are backloaded damage that gets that have stacking damage too. So yeah, the uh, Needless to say, Trans Terra or CG Terra's kit is pretty freaking powerful and compatible with other units out there that have Trent or chaining, such as X Death, who is one of the more powerful mages on the JP side, or Ellie, and possibly Soul. I don't remember what Soul's frames are, but someone will tell us. Next up, Magical Power Full Release gives a 100% debuff for two turns to all of her major elements and a self 200% magic increase for two turns and gives her quadra casting for a follow for one turn. This is on a six turn cooldown available on turn one. So yeah, great. Riot Sword is her last cooldown ability. It is on a three turn cooldown available turn three, a 600% magic attack, ignoring 50% spirit, an AOE 20% uh, with attack with MP drain, which is kind of cool. Ups, uh, recovery items, okay, and enables uh, access to Chaos End for one turn, and enables access to Chaos End Quadra Casting for one turn. This is a really interesting ability, getting MP back, doing damage, and unlocking a more powerful ability. Chaos End is an AoE. Uh, basically a 50 magic attack with 50% ignore spirit with a final hit that is 750% ignore 50% spirit debuffs all of those elements uh, that she loves for 100% for three turns gives herself limit burst gives herself damage modifiers for three turns so yeah long story short trans terror is definitely to me feels like she will be the queen of the mages uh, just because of the limit burst. The limit burst is so insanely powerful. And that's assuming that, like, if you just take damage, it gets even worse for the enemy. She has a lot of strong elemental debuffs. What's more, she has more elemental coverage than any of the CG characters we have seen so far. And she can basically always have access to quadra cast. She has better MP and or MP recovery, and she can do MP reduction. Looking at her MP cost too, yeah, they are a little expensive, so that might be a kind of a downside, but um, she has ways to regenerate MP. So I would say that if you're a fan of Terra, yeah, no worries, this is the definitive edition of Terra. Nothing 
not seeing too funny about is yeah. So yeah, I really like Terra. I think that she's really strong and probably going to be the strongest mage. But um, no testing. I don't. I don't guarantee anything yet. And the last one is the brand new Vina. Let's see if I can get this done in 12 minutes before my last raid orb regenerates. First of all, uh, Kyo Dofina, as I am calling her, Trust Mastery is a 74 attack, 145 magic bow. She should give you a hint of what she is. Uh, Super Trust Mastery, 45 defense, 64 magic, 45 spirit robe with 70% ice and light resistance. This is just a absolutely amazing for a mage. This is absolutely amazing for a healer too. So yeah, really strong, lots of elemental resistance, nothing to complain about there. Now looking at uh, Fina, she has a very high magic stat and a fairly high spirit stat too. Uh, her kit very focuses more on magic, very focuses more, good English. Now, looking at her passives, it looks like she gets a uh, limit first up. She gets natural increases to her abilities, just um, naturally higher limit first fill rate. 20% chance to counter attacks with an AoE heal of 800 HP with a three times mod. That's kind of cool. Uh, heals her HP every turn. 50% chance to ignore a fatal attack when her HP is above 50% or 80%, so cool. Uh, Eternal Blossom, 5% MP recovery per turn, some extra HP, magic, uh, more MP recovery per turn. I guess it's 10%. Why didn't they just lump it together? Uh, true dual hand magic, which is great because she's bows. Extra damage versus birds, so fuck ice bird to death. She has natural ice and light resistance. Oh, maybe she is really just a fuck the ice bird kind of thing. And some extra killers too, which are not listed in here, but okay. She has double casting of her ability, and she has, at the start of battle, access triple casting, probably for equipping her own TMR. So that's cool. Uh, more magic, more spirit, all that good kind of stuff. Now, looking at her limit burst, it's an AoE one hit, 3,450% magic attack that debuffs ice and light resistance by 100% for five turns. And AoE except caster fills 20 limit burst crystals. Wow. Wow, that is a that is ooh, holy shit, Nyx might just have died for this one. And I'm okay with that. Uh 20 limit burst crystal fill on the entire party is really nice given how strong limit bursts have been becoming lately, so I quite like that. Now, looking at her kit, uh, she has basically magic attacks, some that heal AoE for 3,000 HP. Uh, she has, she also does get a new ability for um, basically the new trial for Brave Exvius units. We're not going to talk about that in this video, so uh, moving on. Uh, she can give herself either ice or light element to her attacks, which is good. Also, her deep those skills that add the element also debuff the element of 75% for the enemy and are Chaos Wave Janie, which works nicely with our new Terra. She also has a heal ability, 30 MP while doing damage to the enemy. Uh, so that's pretty cool. AoE, I should say. She has a random access ability, which I'm never a big fan of, uh, but the... The randomly cast abilities are either 150 MP recovery, self limit burst fill of 10 crystals and access to another ability, uh, or basically she can just, it's kind of a roulette thing. I guess this is supposed to be kind of Japanese lottery thing. I don't know. But continuing on, here's one of my favorite things. She has an AOE 30 hit, 450% magic attack that is AR chaining. Ho ho ho, oh ho ho. It's, it's still Christmas. I love AR chaining and non-elemental AR chaining for Arena. Sounds fucking beautiful. I'll take that to go. Thank you very much. Um, but also equipping the uh, holy element to her means that she can still holy chain with uh, Lunara or some other units. So cool. There, From there she has AoE 500% magic attacks with a 200% extra modifier up to six times. So she can get up to basically a 1700% Chaos Wave chaining ability with either Ice or Holy. And 
It's AoE. Wow, that's just really strong. Very curious about how strong she will actually end up being. She has ways of upping her modifiers on some of her other abilities. And then getting into her 7 star, she has an AoE debuff of 100% for ice and light resistance for 3 turns. Give herself a 200% magic boost for 3 turns. And give herself quadra casting for a single turn. Ooh, a big power sweep, potentially. Interesting. On a 6 turn cooldown, available turn 1. So liking that. Uh, she has a self 300 MP recovery, 300 MP heal split over three turns, 200% modifier for a whole bunch of her abilities uh, for three turns, remove debuffs on herself, get self give her, uh, sorry, self gives her 100% uh, break resistance for three turns on a six turn cooldown available turn one. So basically, uh, a reset ability essentially for her that powers her up for the following turns. Her next cooldown ability is a magic attack ignoring 50% of spirit with another magic attack ignoring spirit and another magic attack ignoring spirit and enables access to uh, a special ability for use, enables access to uh, another ability for our for on a three turn cooldown available turn three. So I guess it's a multi attack that also unlocks some other attacks. Cool. And her last cooldown ability is a single target one hit 1000% attack that itself gives a 200% modifier and it enables quadra casting for one turn on a three turn cooldown available turn three. So she does have ways to access her triple casting. And given that she has stacking damage, this could be, or quadra casting, I should say, even. Uh, that can be potentially very, very powerful, especially in the long run. And looking at the abilities she gets uh, for that she unlocks, uh, basically a 100% magic attack that ignores 50% spirit and an AoE attack that ignores spirit too. Interesting. I'm very curious if that works just as a building up modifiers. I'd be really interested to see her cycle, but um, yeah. Needless to say, this is a pretty rocking group of units. I think that all three of them have potential uses. Probably the, le the one I am least sure about is Locke because we need better Stardust Chainers before and Stardust Water Chainers before I get too excited about this. Um, who else is there? Uh, Fina just seems like Queen of the Mages just because she can access Quarter Cast. So, and her limit burst is just so insanely powerful, especially if she gets hurt, which that's easy for mages. And last but not least, Fina just seems really, really cool magic bow damage dealer, which I've kind of been waiting for. So, uh, Chainer slash somewhat finisher with her limit burst. Uh, and in the Ice and Holy Elements, which uh, kind of works with a lot of the team I've been building recently. So yeah, uh, very interesting group of units. Uh, I, I'd say that uh, Fina probably maybe a little bit more uh, specific party. Trans Terra probably, or CG Terra, probably the most flexible of all the units, but uh, some really great stuff coming into the future. Boy, I sure hope you save some lapis. So next time, we'll talk about the other thing that I didn't get a chance to talk about, which is the Brave Exvius Trial. See you next time. This video's gone pretty long. That's why I split them.